she had no idea how great the night would be. In South Beach, Miami, Eva Terry and her date had a great dinner. Even more than the food, it was the people who were there. It was clear that Braxton Perengren liked Eva, and he couldn't hide it. Eva, who was in her thirties and ran the perfume business her family owned, was his boss. Braxton had just started working there as a junior accountant. He was only 24 years old. This year, Eva often picked out Braxton from the group of new hires, just like she did when she was looking for a new friend. She was sick of her husband even though they had only been married for a little over two years. He ran the family business as chief financial officer and kept to himself, which Eva found boring but secure. Eva knew he was fun for a few romps every few weeks, but she didn't see him as anything more than upkeep. Martin, Eva's husband, was six feet two inches and in good shape. He stayed fit by swimming every day. Eva told Martin that she married him because she needed enough money and the love and support of a good guy to succeed. She loved him, but she felt like she needed a younger man to make her happy in bed. Even though she was 45, Eva was the face of sachet fragrances and was always in TV ads and magazine spreads. She had a big effect on both her business and personal life. Before she married Martin, she kept her extramarital affairs a secret. Braxton was her most recent attempt to find a new partner. It was their first date, and Eva, who was having her first extramarital affair, wanted to make sure everything was okay. Braxton passed a thorough check by Eva's security team, which is something she does with all the men in her life. His background was clean, except for a breakup in college, which Eva liked. She was interested in getting to know him better than just looking at his background. Braxton was charming and polite, even though he was an accountant. Eva noticed this when she went to Martin's accounting department and saw how his broad shoulders, stylish suit, and modern vibe stood out against Martin's more traditional style. Martin married Eva because he loved her deeply and thought she was the most beautiful and smart woman in the world. After dating for almost a year, Martin asked Eva to marry him, and she happily said yes. At first, Martin didn't plan to work at Eva's company, but as they got engaged, he became more involved. Martin was very helpful when the company had to turn some debt into private shares. Eva then made him the CFO of Sachet Fragrances, and he was proud to support his wife and her business. Before they got married, Martin and Eva talked in depth about Eva's past relationships with younger men. Martin still had doubts about Eva's loyalty, but he believed her and told her that trust was very important for their marriage. They got married when he was 39 and she was 43, and they had a great first year together. Martin couldn't help but think that Eva might be cheating on him, but he kept these thoughts to himself because he didn't have any solid proof. As their second year began, Martin felt their love waning and again doubted Eva's loyalty, but this time he didn't have any proof. As CEO, Eva had access to all company information, so she could easily find out any secrets if she wanted to. Martin and his wife didn't need a 5,000-square-foot house. Martin would have rather invested the money from their big house than lived in a simple place like a hotel. But he loved their indoor-outdoor pool and took great care of it. He even changed the pH levels so that his dark brown hair wouldn't turn green like it did when he was in school swimming. In June 2010, the fragrance industry started off the new year with a bang by releasing a new scent right before the busy holiday season. This scent became a hit and was backed by celebrities. Even more people bought the product after ads with Eva started running in late September. Eva was often away for promotions, and Martin wondered if she was loyal because she was getting attention from other men. Martin was in charge of the business's finances and could spot a potential hit, but he didn't know how to start dealing with his personal problems. When Eva got home from her month-long roadshow after Thanksgiving, she was exhausted and slept for almost 36 hours. Martin, who was aware of her needs, showered her with love and affection. Even though he was confused by his wife's behavior, caring for her made him feel better, which made him less sure that she was cheating on him. With the holidays coming to an end, Martin was looking forward to spending Christmas with Eva and hoping to reignite the spark that had faded since early summer. Even though he kept in touch with Eva while she traveled around the US and Europe promoting the new product line, Martin still had doubts about her loyalty. While she was gone, he quietly set up micro cameras all over the house. He didn't find out exactly where they were until he checked their feeds one night before Eva came back. Even then, it was hard to tell where they were because the cameras had advanced features like tracking, zooming, and focusing. Martin was embarrassed when he saw himself on camera one night and realized his fly was only partially down. He still thought the cameras would record any embarrassing things that might happen in their home. The cameras had great video quality and even better sound quality. Together, they made a great security system that was supposedly installed for that purpose. Martin had long thought that Eva's affairs happened while she was traveling, but he couldn't say for sure that they didn't happen at home. 
Putting out the cameras was his first step toward finding out about any affairs or learning more about Eva's activities, especially since their busy schedules kept them apart during the day, giving her plenty of time to sneak away for secret meetings. The video footage was sent over the internet to a central computer that stored it in the cloud. Each room in their house had its own set of three cameras, each with a battery backup in case the power went out. Each camera also had its own memory card that could store 24 hours of video and audio recordings. These cameras were wirelessly connected to the main computer in the cloud. Martin was the only one who knew the password to get into that computer. Special software let him see footage from each room on separate screens or focus on certain feeds by tapping and zooming. It was a complex system that was easy to use. As Martin watched the video of himself entering their home with his fly partially down, he wasn't trying to catch Eva in any compromising situations. Instead, he was being cautious to be ready for any situation that might happen. If tabloid magazine editors ever found out about the video, it would surely interest them. Martin hoped that just the thought of such proof existing would help Eva understand what would happen. After the holidays, Martin noticed that Eva wasn't at dinner several times, which made him nervous. He was glad that the cameras were there because they gave him peace of mind. Even though Eva and Martin had a great Christmas with lots of gifts and a new romance, Martin could tell that Eva had changed when they got back to work. However, when he looked at the camera footage and audio recordings every day, they only showed love and affection between them. When Eva asked Martin to visit the factory in China at the end of January to make sure quality control and compliance with company standards, he thought she had other reasons. He agreed to go on the trip even though he had doubts, but he was still wary. He would be gone for two weeks, which he thought would be enough time for Eva to entertain one of her lovers at home while he was away. This time, though, he told himself that he had cameras to keep an eye on things. As usual, Eva woke Martin up early on the day he left with a DJ. Martin was even more careful after the cameras were put up, and he was glad they were there. When Martin left for his trip to Asia in late January, Eva had her own plans. She planned to have Braxton over for dinner at their house instead of going to one of the fancy South Beach restaurants. She was sure she didn't need to seduce Braxton because he had shown interest in her at their last dinner together, so she didn't feel like she had to. Having her lovers come to her put her in charge of the situation. Braxton was set on having Eva and didn't think her husband Martin was important because he didn't find Martin physically frightening and thought Martin couldn't meet Eva's needs. Braxton thought he was the better man to meet Eva's needs. He thought that his size and performance in bed were better than Martin's, and he was sure that he could please Eva in ways that Martin couldn't. Braxton also saw his relationship with Eva as a possible way to move up in his career, he wanted her to help him get the CFO job. Around noon after Martin left, Eva called Braxton into her office. After hearing Eva's request, Braxton quickly arrived, eager to do what she asked. Eva liked it when her men were on time, so thank you, Braxton. Let's get down to business. Would you like to come to my house for dinner tonight? I'd like to talk about how well our new fragrance sold last quarter. Please be there at 7 o'clock and bring the sales charts. Thank you, Braxton. Of course I'll bring all the sales information. You did a great job with the promotion, Mrs. Terry. Just call me Eva when we're alone, like tonight during dinner and our review. On your way out, get my assistant's address. Braxton left, a little let down by the lack of flirting. Even though Eva might have wanted to keep things business to avoid being caught, he was sure that what would happen later would happen. The way Eva moved, like licking her lips and twirling her hair, showed that she wanted to be with him. She tried to be sneaky so as not to be too obvious. Eva had a full security team watching her every move both electronically and physically. Martin didn't know that the house was scoured for bugs every month, but he did know about the physical security measures. Martin put up the secret cameras, and her team found them soon after. Eva didn't want to tell anyone about them because she wanted to keep things under control. She saw it as a way to trick Martin into thinking she was faithful. Her security director told her not to keep the cameras on and suggested a device that would block their transmission instead. Eva thought it was funny that Martin wouldn't have any proof that she was cheating on him because he was watching her. She ordered the device to be put in place, finding the irony of the situation amusing. Eva came home at 4.30 and took a break in the big tub with a glass of Chardonnay. The warm water and bubbles put her in a trance-like state, and by 5.30 she was in her robe and feeling completely calm. Eva walked into the kitchen and asked Martha, is everything ready for dinner tonight? She had already told the chef to get ready but she wanted to make sure everything was going well. She also needed more wine, so she didn't ask the waiter for it. As planned, she saw a candlelit table set for two in the dining room. The place settings were perfect, 
and they were going to start with lobster soup. Then there would be a wedge salad with blue cheese, and finally Chilean sea base with almond green beans. The lemon rosemary finish on the fish was one of Eva's favorites, and it went well with the wine she chose. Martha had already set up the kitchen, so all Eva had to do was turn on the ovens and burners at the right times. She was sure dinner would be delicious. Eva thought Braxton might be willing to help her serve a few plates while they sipped their wine and waited for dinner. She was feeling naughty tonight and loving the decadence of the moment. The thought of controlling the excitement of an illegal act made her happy. Around 6.15, she went back to her bedroom to get ready for the night. With a click of her remote control, she turned off all of Martin's cameras, making sure that no one could see her. If anyone was looking, the screens would now only show static. On her calendar, she had a dinner date with a new client. When the cameras were off, a different scene was about to happen. She sipped her wine and looked through her clothes as she thought about what to wear. A business suit or short skirt seemed too high class for her, but her new red dress, with heels and pearls, was just right. She bought it in Paris while on a promotional tour, and it was one of a kind. She was glad she had found it. For a moment, she wondered what Martin would think if he saw her like this, full of desire and ready to be passionate. But she pushed those thoughts out of her mind. She wanted intense love, and only younger men could give it to her. She was sure that Braxton, like a lion, would be eager to make passionate love, and she was looking forward to many encounters in her own bed. She didn't think about what would happen if she had an affair while she was married. Instead, she felt like she had the right to do what she wanted without feeling guilty. She finished getting ready just as the doorbell rang, a little before seven. Her date was on time, which made her feel good about herself and her desire because she knew she was in charge. She walked downstairs without much of a fuss. The cook and butler had already left, as she had asked them to. Braxton looked very good in his powder blue shirt with a few buttons undone. Ava had to remind herself that he was hers for the night, but she had to take care of some business first. When she let him in, she was surprised to see that he had brought a bottle of wine and flowers, which made her heart warm. She was only used to romantic gestures from her husband Martin. It deeply moved her, none of her previous flings had been romantic, which thrilled her. She offered him a drink and poured herself another glass of Chardonnay for the evening, but Braxton politely turned her down and chose sparkling water instead. As she started making the soup, she double-checked Martha's instructions to make sure everything was right. At the same time, Martin had arrived in Tokyo and was waiting for his next flight to Beijing when his phone rang to let him know there was a problem. He looked over the details and saw that the cameras had reported a problem. When he tried to connect to the main server, he saw that the camera's feed was not working. Confused, he looked at a second screen and saw that the cameras had power but were only sending out white noise. Martin was furious and tried every button in the app, even the advanced option he had never used before, but nothing worked. He hit the button over and over, which almost broke his phone. The cameras had chosen the worst time to stop working, so he gave up on the app and called the security guard who had said the equipment was bulletproof to demand a refund. As Eva and Braxton ate, they talked about sales numbers. Braxton drank a glass of wine, but not more. Eva wondered if he was just drinking slowly or didn't like alcohol. She didn't care either way. If he was as good in bed as he was at dinner, he would be worth it. While they were eating, Eva played with Braxton by running her foot up his ankle while wearing stockings. She was sure he got her point. At first, he looked surprised, but then he smiled and looked at the sales numbers. It was like Eva was the cat in a game of cat and mouse. Braxton, do you like older women? She asked, putting on her high heel again. Only if the older woman is you, Eva, he answered easily. Then maybe we should go to my bedroom since we both like older women. It's been a long day, and I want to go over the sales forecasts for the first quarter. What about your husband? He asked quickly. She looked at the time and said, Martin? He should be getting on his flight to Beijing soon, she answered. Lead the way, my love, Braxton said, taking her hand. As they walked into the master bedroom, Braxton was amazed by the unique furniture, which had been carefully chosen to suit the tastes of a CEO. Eva sat down in a high back chair in a cozy area away from the bed, crossed her legs, and hung one of her high heels from the back. Would you mind helping me out of my heels, Braxton? she asked. She had reached her climax again, and this is why she likes younger men. At one point, she thought enough was enough, but Braxton didn't listen to her and kept beating her. He yelled, I own you now, which, and she was beginning to hurt, but Braxton kept going. Braxton had pushed her to her limits, almost beyond what she could handle. 
She promised herself she would not underestimate him again, seeing him as a possible long-term lover instead of just a one-night stand. The thought of a long-term lover made her blush and shiver with fear, because she felt trapped by guilt over her first affair since she got married. She felt the weight of her commitment to Martin, not the carefree days when she was single. Strangely, while she was thinking about betrayal, she realized how important Martin's trust was, even though she was having a great time with Braxton. Eva fought the urge to scream at Braxton to leave because she knew he wouldn't understand how she felt. When Braxton was getting his clothes together, Eva lay in bed and quietly cried. What had she done? She had ruined not only herself but also her marriage. Martin was her first choice for a husband because he was smart and loving, but not very charming. She thought about how he had helped her during her busy promotion and wondered if he was really that bad after all. He had two of the three qualities she wanted, and he did love her. Who else would have put up with her after her month-long promotion, or given her so much support at work and emotionally? Braxton smiled as he left her bedroom, indicating that he was sure they would meet again in the future. He left his socks behind because he was afraid the housekeeper would find them and put them in with Martin's laundry by accident. Meanwhile, Martin's anger grew as he got off the plane in China, still having problems with his cameras. He didn't want to call Eva because he knew it was late in Miami. He didn't think she could teach him anything useful. Would she say, I had a great night and slept with a younger man? He didn't think she would be that honest or stupid. On the way to the hotel, Martin began to think that Eva or more likely her security team had found the cameras and turned them off. He couldn't understand why they would do that. The thought of Eva cheating on him made him very nervous. It could ruin the relationship they had worked so hard to build on trust, honesty, and loyalty, ideas they had talked about a lot before they got married. Martin had a lot of questions and suspicions, but he knew he needed solid proof the next time. His trip to China was boring. He did the usual things like check the numbers and look at the assembly line, even though he didn't know much about how fragrances were made. He was able to fake his way through talks, but his host knew he wasn't very good at it. Two weeks later, he went home expecting Eva not to be there. To his surprise, she met him at the airport in a beautiful red dress with pearls and high heels, as if she had just come back from a promotional tour. She said, Hey Marty, I'm so glad you're back. I totally missed you. She gave him a tight hug and a deep kiss on the lips. Martin was shocked and happy to be greeted with such affection, so he kissed her back with the same intensity. She seemed excited, but he couldn't help but wonder if it was because she felt guilty. I missed you too. What's with the big welcome, he asked. That's all I missed was my husband, she said with a pout. Of course, I missed you too. Are you hungry? Let's go home. Martha made dinner. I just want some alone time with you tonight, Eva said, and her eyes showed that she felt little guilty. It was clear from the look on her face, even though his cams weren't working. That sounds good. What's for dessert, he asked with a smile and a raised eyebrow. Eva smiled with a fun look on her face. I am. Eva and Martin spent the whole weekend in bed, eating, hanging out, and taking showers together. It was like they were back on their honeymoon. On Monday, they showered together again to get ready for work. Over the weekend, Eva felt love with Martin that she had never felt with Braxton. She felt loved, safe, and secure when Martin held her. The time they spent together over the weekend made her understand how badly Braxton had treated her the previous weekend. She briefly thought about her flaws, but she quickly pushed them out of her mind because she didn't want to ruin her happiness from her great weekend with Martin. Martin drove his Ferrari to work, but Eva didn't like it because it was too loud, uncomfortable, and fast for her. Since Martin hadn't driven his Ferrari in two weeks, he decided to bring it out because he wanted to give it a spin to clean out the engine. Eva arranged for transportation to work because she couldn't stand riding in Martin's Ferrari. She thought it was best anyway. She wanted to check her emails, which she had neglected over the weekend while giving Martin lots of love. Her plan seemed to work perfectly, because Martin didn't seem to think anything was wrong with Braxton's visits to the house and overnight stays before Martin came back. Martin was glad that Eva didn't decide to ride with him. He didn't understand why the cam suddenly turned on again the day after he left for his trip. He was very careful with details, so he planned to have the security company he hired look into it. He called them on his way to work. The security company was given a key during the initial installation, so it wasn't a problem to get to the cameras. Since it was Monday, no one was available, so he didn't think any new information would come up. By late morning, he heard that the cameras were back to normal. The specialist did say that during their scan of the house that day, 
they found another electronic device with repeaters installed that wasn't there during the initial installation. They weren't sure what the device was for, but they thought it might be a jamming device that caused problems with the cameras. Martin quickly put the pieces together and came to the conclusion that Eva's security team had found and turned off the cameras. Martin's heart sank because he knew how dangerous it was for Eva to know about the cameras. He was now sure that Eva was having an affair in their own home because there was no other reason for it. If Eva had asked him about the cameras, he would have told her they were there to keep them safe. She knew about them and turned them off on purpose, though. After lunch, he planned to take the first steps to protect his finances. There was a meeting with Braxton set up in Eva's office at 10 o'clock. Gina had been Eva's personal assistant for 10 years and earned more than most people in the company because of her unwavering loyalty to Eva, which had grown over the years. However, Gina had been suspicious about Eva's interactions with Braxton ever since he was called to her office. Even though she looked up to Eva and wanted to be as successful as her one day, she couldn't get rid of the feeling that what Eva did to her husband was morally wrong. Martin still didn't know about Eva's relationship with Braxton, just like he didn't know about her affairs before they got married. Gina hoped Martin wasn't completely unaware of what was going on, but she knew that work issues often took priority over personal ones. She hoped there was a way for her to tell Martin about his wife's affairs. Martin always treated her with respect and never talked down to her. He was friendly, personable, and genuinely cared about everyone in the company. Gina could see why Eva liked him, Martin was in good shape, clean-shaven, and had beautiful blue eyes. Even though he was 35 years older than her, Gina still thought he looked young enough. Even when Martin went to Eva's office, she got a little excited. Martin didn't have the best sense of style, but Gina thought that a person's character was more important than how they looked, despite what Eva might have told Martin. At 9.55, Gina had Braxton sitting next to her getting ready for his meeting with Eva. She thought it was strange that Eva hadn't asked him to bring anything to make the meeting look more official. Was this meeting just to cover for something more private? Gina wondered if Eva would be doing something private with Braxton in her office. She thought about listening in through the closed door or using the intercom while pretending to be on a call, but she knew that Eva would see the lit intercom light if she did that. Eva buzzed Gina on the intercom, and she immediately told Braxton to come in. He did, and then closed the door behind him. Gina stayed on the line and pressed the intercom button again. She knew it was dangerous, but she wanted to confirm what she thought about Braxton and Eva. Eva told Braxton, we need to end this. Martin is back from China, and I don't want to take any more risks with you. Braxton shifted in his seat. What if I don't want to? What if I want to keep having fun with the CEO of the company? He spoke loudly, almost so loudly that people outside of Eva's office could hear him. Braxton, you better hope you're just being spoiled and not making threats, Eva said, lowering her voice in hopes that Braxton would do the same. Oh, really? What if I tell your boss, who is also my boss, what happened last weekend? Braxton asked. Wow, I never thought you'd be so rude or ignore my feelings like this. Would you like to put it on right here in my office? Maybe on my desk? Eva pointed across the desk and looked interested. Braxton started to nod in agreement, shocked but clearly excited. You stupid man. You'll never touch me again, and especially not in my office. Who do you think you are? Tell Martin whatever you want. It's your word against mine, and I know who Martin will believe, Eva said firmly, even though she felt a little sick inside. As Braxton got up to leave, he said, well, let's wait and see. Eva, who isn't afraid of a fight, leaned in and said, before you leave, Braxton, think about this, our whole affair was recorded. It would look like you forced yourself on me, like you pretty much ripped me off, especially that first night. Remember when I told you to stop? How would that sound on your record? You witch! Braxton yelled. I am, and I accept that, but we're done, and so are you. Eva told Braxton, I suggest you start looking for your next job and leave the company peacefully if you know what's best for you. She then turned her attention back to her desk and hung up the phone. Gina heard the whole conversation and was startled when Braxton slammed the door as he left Eva's office. She called Eva right away. If you're sure everything is okay, could you ask Gina to call security? No, everything is fine. There was just a small misunderstanding about the company's direction. There's no need to worry, but thanks for checking in. Braxton, Mr. Peregrine, was unhappy with how things turned out. If you're sure everything is okay, could I get you something? Maybe a cup of tea? That would be great. Thanks, Gina, you're great. Gina made Eva's tea, 
which proved what she already thought was going on. She also knew that Braxton was done. Should she break Eva's trust and tell Martin? She had to decide what was right for her husband and her conscience. Braxton tore out of here like he sat on spikes, Gina said as she put her tea on a coaster in Eva's office. There was a small mistake, so there was no need to worry. It was a shame, but he had to leave. Eva explained, I expect Mr. Peregrine will start looking for a new job. Wow, Eva, I didn't know you knew so much about everything, even what was going on in finance downstairs. That's impressive, but why didn't Martin take care of it? Gina's questions made Eva a little annoyed, this was her business, and everyone worked for her. She didn't have to explain herself, but she thought it might be better to calm Gina down than to fire her. Well, it's best to deal with problems right away when they are ignored. I saw a problem coming, so I did something about it. She kept going. Martin told him what to do, but he didn't listen. Eva sipped her tea slowly. Gina, thanks for the tea. I need to talk about some picture shoots, so please have Michelle come in at exactly 11 a.m. Thanks. That was Eva's usual way of ending a conversation, and she walked away from Gina. The encounter made Gina feel uneasy. Even though she left Eva's office with Grace, she felt terrible inside. How could this woman be so mean to Martin? When she got back to her desk, Gina called Martin and said, Hi, Martin. In a whisper, she asked, Can we meet for lunch at 12.30? I need to talk to you about something really important. Okay, Gina. How about Tres Amigos on 3rd? You said 12.30? That works. Thanks, Martin. We need to talk right away, so I'm sorry for the short notice. Okay, Gina. I'll see you at 12.30. Martin was already sitting in a booth in the back, and he motioned for Gina to join him as she walked in. As soon as Gina sat down, the waitress came over, and they quickly chose a chicken fajita from the lunch menu to share. Martin was too curious to wait. Martin asked Gina, what's so important that we had to talk over lunch? Gina took a sip of her iced tea and looked at Martin. He was handsome, but he was married, she reminded herself. But maybe he'd be filing for divorce after she told him. Martin was shocked and on high alert. Gina, you've been faithful to Sachet for a long time, longer than I have. I might lose your respect after what I say, but I respect you too much not to. That made Gina feel a little better, I've always thought you put the company's needs first. I couldn't think any less of you than the professional you are. She calmed down and talked about her meeting with Braxton Perengrin in the morning. Martin, I think Eva is having an affair with Braxton Perengrin. I overheard them talking this morning, and it sounded like Eva was breaking up with him. She said that she couldn't risk you finding out since you got back from China. Martin was shocked. His worst fears had come true. He drank a lot of his iced tea and looked down at the table without saying a word. Gina was surprised that he wasn't showing more emotion. Then a thought struck her. Perhaps he already knew. Their lunch came out before Martin could answer, which he liked because it cut him off. The waitress left, leaving only the sound of the chicken fajita for two sizzling between them. As he spoke, Martin looked at Gina deeply. Thanks. Why are you thanking me, Martin? I just told you your wife is cheating. That's not the response I expected. Aren't you angry wanting to lash out at me, your wife, or Braxton? Gina's voice rose with each question. Gina, how long have you been with Sachet? Martin asked, unfazed. Ten years last December? Why? Gina replied, her agitation clear, but her tone lowered to match Martin's. Please bear with me, things will make sense soon. How long have you worked directly for Eva? Ten years. I've always been on her team. Where are you going with this? I just told you your wife is cheating and you're asking about my job history. I don't get it. During your time with Eva, has she slept with younger guys whenever she wanted? Yes, Gina answered, still confused. So what's different about Mr. Peregrin? Are you telling me you're okay with Eva fooling around? Sorry, I must have misjudged you. I won't bring it up again. No, Gina, you've got it wrong. You didn't overstep. I won't stand for Eva having affairs. What's changed now? Martin pressed. You're married. It's just not right. Exactly. That's the point. I'm married to the woman who won't stop playing around, it seems. And for the record, I'm not okay with it. 
That's why she ended things with him today and nearly smothered me with closeness this past weekend. That's probably more detail than I need. But I get your point. You think she's feeling guilty? I'm sure she is. And she's probably feeling pretty vulnerable too, Martin responded calmly. What are your plans for the rest of the day? I don't have any big plans. I'm going to do what I normally do, stay in my office, and try to figure out how to fix my broken marriage. Martin, how do you stay so calm? I had a boyfriend once who did something similar and even though I'm not married, I was crushed. Spent the whole weekend drowning my sadness in Starbucks ice cream. Gina, I knew who Eva was before we got married. I mean, I knew about her lifestyle. Can't say I really knew her, though. She swore she changed, that she was ready to settle down with just one man, me. I thought I could trust her, but she's like a chameleon, she can change colors to fit in anywhere. Martin went on, Gina, you went above and beyond today by telling me all this. I owe you a lot, and I'm going to tell you something, but you promise not to tell anyone, not even Eva. Yes, of course you can keep this between us. Gina looked a little pale and then lost in thought. But I guess I broke Eva's trust today by telling you her secrets, which is why you're asking. Gina, I may have been wrong about Eva, but I know I can trust you because I put cameras in our house while she was on her promotional tour. A camera? Why? Gina asked in shock. Eva might be messing around, or at least thinking about it. There were a lot of clues. I was pretty sure when she sent me to China for two weeks after her tour. I figured the cameras would catch her if she was up to something. What went down? Braxton had to be in the mix by then, right? Didn't the cameras catch what you thought was going on? You must have already known everything I just told you. I figured that too, Martin said, sounding serious. But Eva must have learned about the cameras and set up a way to turn them off whenever she needed privacy for her own business. That conversation she had with Braxton today about the cameras wasn't just her bluffing, she knew about them and stopped them from working. Sneaky move. Sorry, no insult. I had no clue. Do you think she recorded anything? I mean, if you couldn't see her. Maybe she moved the feeds somewhere else instead of just shutting them down. Gina, you're onto something. I didn't even consider that. It's subtle, but maybe there's some truth to what she said. I don't know all the tech stuff, but it's possible. I'll call my security company again and have them look at those boxes. I was mad that Eva was blocking the cameras, so I didn't give it much thought. Thanks. I gotta run, Martin. And I'm lost in all this tech talk. But you've shown me a whole new side of Eva I never saw coming. It's crazy how far she'd go to fool you. I might not be a saint, but I can't sit by and watch someone as nice as you get played by Eva. You're too good for that. Gina quickly left, but Martin lingered, sipping more iced tea and paying the bill. He took his time getting back to the office. Even though she broke up with Braxton, Eva seemed to have moved on to another young fling. She always thought she could trick him and get away with it. She might hide for a while to avoid being caught, but Martin was sure she'd go back to her old ways as soon as things calmed down. The fact that she disabled the cameras to hide her affair proved it. Back at the office, Martin checked his voicemail. Eva left a message saying Braxton Perringreen was no longer with the company and he should plan his exit package with HR. No reason given. Martin would have to come up with one, which shouldn't be too difficult given the situation. He had slept with his boss's wife. He thought there must be a box to check on the form for that. At five, he called Braxton into his office and told him, Braxton, it has come to my attention that you have been falsifying company expense reports. We're sorry, but we have a strong policy against employees stealing. You are no longer working for us, so please get your things together and leave within 10 minutes. Security is ready to make sure you only take your own stuff, you stupid fool. You're just doing what your wife tells you, Braxton spat. Pardon? Martin replied calmly, questioning his accusation. You heard me? You're firing me because I slept with your wife and now you're trying to save your marriage. You're right. You're fired because you told my boss that you slept with Eva. Martin replied without feeling anything, I hope it was worth it. You're nothing but a weakling. You get that? I showed your wife a good time. What does that say about you as a man? Braxton was now fully charged and felt like he still had control over Eva. He thought their earlier conversation was just her putting him in his place for their weekend fling. Braxton, that could be true. We'll never know for sure, but I do know that you're being fired right away. 
If you're accused of financial misconduct, it will be hard to find work again, especially in finance. Martin replied calmly, being accused of financial misconduct doesn't sit well with employers or auditors. Is that all you've got? Some false charge of expense fraud? Braxton asked, but his tone was less angry. That and the fact that you just admitted to sleeping with my wife, who was a top executive. I think that's enough, don't you think? Martin replied. Don't you care about your wife, you jerk? Braxton asked. Maybe I didn't understand what you were saying when you said, oh, wait, you thought you were some big shot stealing her from me. Martin replied sarcastically, you thought you were taking away my prize. So, you're not mad at your wife and me for our affair? And you think I'm better in bed than you? Braxton said, losing his temper. Yes, I'm not mad at all. In fact, I'm glad. Eva is yours if you want her. It looks like I was just borrowing her, so feel free to call her whenever you want. She's had plenty of guys like you before. You're really just another name in her little black book. I bet she's already moved on to her next target, didn't she hint at that this morning? She's pretty, but she needs a lot of attention, and I can't give it to her. His confidence was fading. He thought he might be able to get Martin into a fight, which he knew he could easily win against a college swimmer who couldn't compete with his wrestling skills. I'll just pack up my stuff, Braxton said quietly, giving up. One last thing, Braxton, you might want to see a doctor. I never take chances. Now get out of my office, you jerk. Martin spat out, even though he knew Ava was probably clean. He also had one more surprise for Braxton. Braxton gathered his things, stormed out of the building, and walked about 20 yards to his car, where he fished for his keys. As soon as he pushed the button, the car caught fire and shook violently before settling back down. The tires were also on fire. He knew that if he had been a few feet closer, he would have been killed. He had to accept that maybe he had messed with the wrong guy and made Ava's husband, who was a very powerful enemy, mad. The weekend between Ava and Martin felt cold. She thought Braxton's car accident was just bad luck. Martin wasn't himself. Ava tried to talk to him on Saturday, but he wouldn't respond on Sunday. Ava felt like something wasn't right and thought she knew what it was. She didn't push him, hoping he'd finally open up. She thought Braxton told Martin about their affair. If Martin wouldn't talk to her, she had to think he already knew. Braxton wasn't scared of Martin. He thought about Ava all weekend and wanted her more than any other woman. He wanted to win her over, even though she was married, because she wanted to give in to him. Braxton didn't care about his old Honda. The fire department put out the fire, and the insurance company would pay to fix the car. The police investigation didn't turn up anything important, but they did find some burned wires near the gas pump, which they think were the likely cause. Martin made plans in the meantime. He was going to get rid of Ava and Braxton by making Gina the face of sachet fragrances and taking over the business. His plan was easy to understand and worked well. It would protect his future and keep him sane. His complicated plan with the expensive cameras didn't work. Martin knew that Ava wouldn't stay true if he gave her enough time. He had a lot of free time, so he worked nonstop week after week. Even though Ava tried to cling to him, he kept his distance and didn't show her any affection or emotion. It was hard for him to resist her, but he did it for six weeks until Ava finally gave in to her need for affection. After six weeks of Martin's silence, Ava gave up. She called Braxton and asked him to meet her at her house at six. Braxton knew it was a booty call, so he got ready and got there on time. Braxton knocked on the door and saw that it was dark. Ava answered it, quickly turned off the camera with her key fob, and let him in. She told him that Martin was at a meeting until the next day, but made it clear that Braxton had to leave when she was done. Braxton knew it was just a hookup, so he followed Ava's rules. Ava gave Braxton a glass of wine and explained the rules. He couldn't stay the night because he had to make her happy, and he would leave when she told him to. Braxton agreed, making it clear that he understood what she meant. Then finish your wine and get to work, she said. You almost cost me my marriage. Braxton, make this count, or this is the last time you'll ever have me. When their conversation was over, Ava said, enough. I'm done for the night. Get your clothes on and leave. Even though Braxton was having some fun, he felt used. So what am I, a human Johnson, he asked. Who says you get to call all the shots? I do. Ava told him, now leave. I'll lock the doors after you're gone. Braxton realized, filled with anger, that he had already told Ava's husband about his affair with her. 
This time, he chose to be more careful. When he stepped onto Martin's side of the bed, he felt something push against his foot. He raised his toes a little to get a better look. He thought something might be under the bed. When he dropped his foot back down, he felt something metallic touching them. Just as he was about to pull away, a clang startled both him and Ava. An intense pain shot through his right foot. Attempting to move it, he found himself unable to do so, yelping in agony as it started to gush from his wound. Urging Ava to turn on the light amidst gasps of pain, she switched on her bedside lamp. My God, Braxton, what the heck is wrong with you? I said get the heck out of my house, Ava exclaimed, alarmed by his distress. She looked at his hurt face and knew something was very wrong. What happened? My foot's gone. I can't feel it anymore, he cried out in pain. Braxton yelled in pain and anger, what the heck is this? What did you do to me? I swear I'll off you, as Ava jumped out of bed and rushed to his side, turning on Martin's bedside lamp to get a better look. Braxton was shocked to see that a bear trap had caught his foot and was chained to the bedpost frame, almost cutting it off. Braxton, don't talk. I didn't do anything. I think my husband did. Oh my god, this looks bad. Just stay still, Ava said, her voice shaking. She ran to the bathroom in a panic to get towels to stop the blood. Braxton's cries and screams could be heard intermittently. She hesitated to move the chain, but she eventually reached the end of it. She then told Braxton to pull his foot out from under the bed, which he did carefully. His screams got louder as his hurt foot came out of the trap. The sharp teeth of the trap were deeply embedded in the bones of most of his right foot. His toes turned blue, and he felt useless because he couldn't get out of the trap without passing out. He begged Ava to call 911 for help. His phone told him that the cameras weren't working, but this time he knew it wasn't a glitch. He had the security company reprogram the cameras to broadcast on multiple frequencies, which would get around Ava's jamming device. He listened to Ava's commands and watched the scene play out in real time from the cloud server, feeling like he was in his own private movie. And after all the fun and games, Braxton stepped on the mousetrap while Ava was telling him to leave. It was more of a bear trap, but Martin thought it was better to be safe than sorry. A broken toenail wasn't a good enough punishment for stealing his wife, so he bought the more powerful module from the nearby sports store. The steel bolts and chain he used seemed to be securely attached to the solid oak headboard. He wondered if Ava would call 911 or let him bleed to death. Braxton slashed at Ava while the chain limited his movements. He was in a lot of pain and fear. He knew he needed medical help right away because he was feeling weak. Ava, I need to get to the hospital. I'm going to die if I don't get this trap off of me, he told her. Hand me my phone, please, I'm begging you as one human being to another. You have to get help. Braxton was pleading with Ava. Ava was scared and didn't know what to do next. Calling 911 would get her help, but it would also lead to an investigation, so she felt stuck in the same way that Braxton did. In a strange moment, she even thought about using her magnum to end Braxton's pain and then her own. She sat back in her chair and thought about Martin's harsh warnings about trust and loyalty. Meanwhile, Braxton struggled on the floor and tried unsuccessfully to open the trap. Every time he tried, it hurt more and made him weaker. He cried out for help, but Ava seemed cold and unresponsive, lost in her own thoughts. She realized she was caught in Martin's trap, both physically and figuratively. Her marriage was falling apart, and now her lover's life was in danger. She knew that if she told anyone about the affair to save Braxton, it would hurt her image and job at Sachet. Martin, meanwhile, watched the events unfold and knew that his marriage was over. He thought about calling for help, but chose to let Ava deal with the consequences of what she did. Braxton's condition got worse, and his face got paler every second. A person can still survive even after losing a lot of blood. Martin thought Ava could make things right, so he thought about calling her again but chose not to. Gina was done with her shower, and the sound of the hotel blow dryer confirmed it. Martin was about to turn off the feed when Ava pulled her magnum out of the closet. Martin knew she kept it for self-defense and often went to the shooting range to practice, so he was sure that if she pointed it at something, it would probably go off. The shot she fired at Braxton almost knocked him out. She may have thought she was ending his pain. At the last second, Braxton looked up into her cold, dead eyes and saw his life flash before his eyes. She pulled the trigger, but the shot went wide and into Martin's pillow. Maybe she was really trying to hit him, but he wasn't there. Martin was shocked to see Braxton still fighting for his life. Gina walked into the bedroom wearing lingerie and high heels, and Martin quickly put down his iPad. 
My dear, he said, do you remember when I told you that you could easily manage sachet, even with your eyes closed? I do, but I thought you were just being nice. Gina replied, I didn't think you were serious, even though you tried to convince me otherwise. Ah, but I meant every word. And now, I think your chance is just around the corner. Okay, I'll show my love to the next CEO of Sachet as long as you promise not to get intimate with your slat wife again. She quickly replied, I don't like sharing. Don't worry, my dear, I've been true to you since the start of our relationship. Plus, he told her, I think she'll be busy for the next 20 years. Neighbors called the police because they heard a gunshot coming from Martin and Eva's house. The police arrived fully equipped, afraid of a possible break-in. The cameras were directly connected to the security company, so if there had been a break-in, the company would have been notified, which would have caused them to call the police. When the police arrived, the scene looked like something from a horror movie. A woman was unconscious on the bed in her robe, which was stained with red stuff. She had a tool in her right hand, and a man who wasn't dressed was about to pass out next to her. The police weren't sure how bad the injuries were, so they called for doctors and the fire department right away while they looked into what was going on. As they checked each room, they waited for more emergency workers to arrive. The man was caught in a bear trap that was connected to the bed. The police thought it looked like a sex encounter gone wrong, but they couldn't be sure. Eva seemed fine, but she couldn't talk. She was taken to the hospital by paramedics after the police tried to question her. The man who was stuck in the bear trap was eventually freed by the fire department, who used the jaws of life to pry open the trap and free his foot. His foot hung loosely as they put him on a stretcher for transport. Eva was physically better by the next morning, but her mental health stayed bad, and she stayed quiet. The bear trap was seen as a deadly tool. Eva was charged with having the gun, hurting someone, and not helping Braxton when he was badly hurt. She was also charged with illegally firing the Magnum. Because she wasn't fit to stand trial, she was sent to a mental hospital for care and stayed there for the rest of her life. No one paid attention to Braxton's claims that Eva's husband set the trap, even though he lived even though he lost about two-thirds of his right foot. After all, he shouldn't have been in bed with another man's wife. The police thought if he was foolish enough to mess with a married woman, he got what was coming to him. Martin successfully convinced the board of directors that Gina should step up as the new face and leader of Sachet Fragrances. Gina, who was ten years younger than Eva, brought a lively energy that would be missed if Eva couldn't come back. Gina knew how Eva ran the business because she had been her personal assistant and knew all the important people in the industry. The board agreed, wanting to keep things stable and avoid any possible scandal while Eva was away. Gina showed how beautiful she was and how good she was at running a business when she took over sachet fragrances. She released a new scent called Secrecy, which became very famous very quickly. She promoted it in a way similar to how Eva did with her last scent, but with one important difference. Martin, her husband, went with her on all 30,000 miles of her promotional trip. The simplest way to catch rodents is with a simple mousetrap that is the right size for the job.